Jason Peacock here with a newish game from Protos Games. Uh, this is Aliens vs. Predator The Hunt Begins 2nd Edition. Uh, from what I know, the 2nd Edition came out almost as soon as 1st Edition was uh, sent to backers. What we have is a dungeon esque crawl game. Now, it's not a one versus many like a lot of these types of games are. But these games are a dime a dozen. Every day I see these new miniatures Kickstarter games on advertisements. And I don't even care anymore. I just, I'm totally desensitized to big splashy minis with some dungeon map tiles. So, what makes this game stand out from amongst the herd? I'll start off... The miniatures are the best I've seen. And I'm a pretty big miniatures painter. Like, I go nuts for painting miniatures. It's been a hobby of mine since I was a kid. And these resin figures with the realistic looking uh, bases is phenomenal. So the game can be played solo or one or two players um, versus the AI aliens. Kind of like uh, horde mode where you just got to, uh, you've got waves of aliens coming in controlled by AI, and you've got to seal X amount of breaches, depending on how difficult you want to make the game. Alternatively, you can play uh, two factions against each other. There's uh, campaign missions you can play from the book, or you can use a deck of cards that will randomize missions for each faction, and you can build your own map. So the replayability is infinite with this. The ideal way to play this, however, is three players. Predators, aliens, US Marines. Now it's not just straight up run and kill all the other factions and you win. No, everybody just kind of gets in each other's way from accomplishing your own objectives. Each mission will have a certain set amount of objectives for each faction. For example, the Predators here might have to collect skulls, so they've got to defeat someone in hand-to-hand -hand combat and then spend an action um, picking up that skull, which will just be a token. Uh, the Marines might have to, you know, uh, go to a certain room and, and do an action there to start a communications uplink. This is just a bunch of random uh, tiles I put together. This isn't actually any mission. Uh, it's, usually take, it's usually quite a bit bigger than this. So the game round will start off, everyone's going to draw up to five of their faction cards. Now any minis skirmish game isn't anything without card play to supplement it. Otherwise it's just senseless dice chucking. So you need the cards in a game like this. And each faction has 20 unique cards that are give them tricks up their sleeves or cool little abilities. And then all factions have one that let you uh, basically reshuffle your, your deck and draw new ones. So you've got your hand of cards and everybody rolls a d20. The only type of dice used in this game. Highest roll goes first, second highest, second, and so on. Now you're just going to pick a single one of your faction guys and you're going to activate them. And these little tiny activation tokens you can put beside them to show that they've, they've gone already. Every unit has a little um, uh, faction card that'll have their statistics. The one hard and fast rule about this game is you cannot duplicate actions. So you can't do two shoot actions, you can't do two close combat actions. The only exception really is um, moving two spaces is if you do a run action, but that takes up two. So I could move here, and then I want to throw my disc at this alien, so my predator's uh, range skill is 13. That means I need a 13 or less on a d20. A 15, so that was a miss. That guy moved and did one action. His uh, his turn is done. And then the next in initiative order goes. So maybe this alien would move in and, uh, and attack with his tail. And then uh, a marine would go. This guy would go here and he would go into overwatch mode, say. Uh, going into sentry. Which lets you just pause your, your action you can shoot, move, or move before or after an enemy figure does their action. Um, however, if you shot and then went into sentry, you cannot shoot again because of the no duplicated 
um, action rule. On the surface, it's a very simple set of rules. Um, the D20 system is great. I love uh, rolling under a, a certain skill number on a D20. It, it just has a way wider range of ver versatility in your skills, right? Um, if you use D6, you know, you're, you can only have so much difference between somebody that's really amazing at something and someone who's just okay. With a D20, you can really show that skill difference a lot better, so I love it. I'm hooked on the D20. A 20 is a fumble. If you roll a 20, your, your shot misses and um, uh, you lose your further actions. Whereas if you roll a 1, um, the enemy doesn't get an armor save. Um, and using... it's not always one dice per, uh, per attack, right? Because they would have something called a rate of attack. So if this uh, combi stick predator here goes to attack, his rate of attack is 4. So I would roll 4 d20s and all the ones that roll under the target would be hits. These guys are bruisers. Uh, with the stuff that comes with the game, all the marines and aliens have 1 hit point and these predators have 3. There's also another 10 aliens that's up on my painting desk. Uh, so it comes with 15 aliens, 5 marines and 3 predators. I think this game is amazing value uh, for what you get in the box. The tiles are high quality, there's tons of them. Um, and it's also worth noting that the game starts with all your figures represented by these ping tokens. Um, and not until you're seen by someone else do you flip it over and actually uh, reveal the figure that was on there. There's a few in-game mechanics where this, this matters. Personally, I think it's not that important. They could have uh, stripped it out. So on the surface, it's a very simple game. You're um, you're doing two actions with a guy, maybe playing one of your special cards. You're limited to two during the round, but there's a ton of little nuanced rules with every faction. Like the Marines, they can like uh, basically create their own door. There's little door tokens that um, I didn't bring out. Um, it's called wielding the breach, but they can do that three times a game. Aliens can't open doors, so they've got to break it down. So they start at a target number, and it gets easier the more aliens in that square. Um, certain weapons do things, like the flamethrower does a burning inferno action. The grenade launcher does the grenade action. Uh, um, there's a guy with a little ping thing that can pick up targets around the corner. You put all that together, and it really gets complicated. And something that drives me nuts about that is I got to get third-party reference sheets off BGG because the guys that made the game can't take that into consideration. It really bugs me, but the community is awesome. You absolutely have to print these off. So the rule book is also a, a bear to get through. This thing is like 55 pages and there's no glossary in the rule book. So if you want to look something up, you got to go fishing for it every time and, and, and they don't have everything organized the way I would organize something like all the different skills should be like here's all the different things a marine can do a predator to do a alien can do but they've got you know uh, actions extended actions uh, marine actions uh, faction actions it's it's all over the place and luckily it's got a solo mode so you can set it up and you can figure out the rules that way but it it took me almost six games before I wasn't nose deep in the rule book every turn looking up all these different timing rules and what about this situation and that situation and they don't have a huge presence on BGG with answering questions either it's mostly the community of players that are doing all of that but with that aside there is a lot of awesome stuff in this game first of all you've got the asymmetry of the sides they all they all play completely different their faction decks offer really cool things that apply to their side. Like, the Marines have tactical training, so, you know, anytime you're fighting these guys in a regular hallway, uh, the people shooting at them gets a negative modifier and they're to hit. Also, Marines, if they're on the same square and a Predator wants to kill the guy with the flamethrower, you can choose for someone else to take the wound instead. Predators, when they first get seen by a ping token and they got to reveal themselves, they can actually back up one spot. 
kind of emulating how they're uh, prowling around in the woods, emulating uh, voices that they've heard. And yeah, the aliens, they can like hide in infested tiles. Uh, they've got the number. If you, if you kill them, they have a chance of spraying acid back at you. And they can leave these acid tiles, uh, acid tokens laying around on the tiles, which reduces the amount of occupancy that a tile can hold. So the, the asymmetry of the factions is great. It's also a very expandable game. You can get um, all sorts of different um, factions from either your friendly local game store or Protoss themselves. Um, my brother and I have both gotten a bunch. I've got a couple other squads of Marines. I got an Alien Queen, a Crusher. I got that big Marine thing that Ripley used in the Aliens movie to uh, fight the Queen at the end of it. I like that it's not just everybody go kill each other. No, these guys have their mission to accomplish, they've got theirs and they've got theirs, and while everyone's out doing that, they're, you know, they're battling each other off, trying to hold off the enemy so that they can accomplish their goals, and it comes together brilliantly. The combat in this is really tense, and it's high risk. If, if I'm just playing with these five marines, this alien rolls a hit and I fail my armor roll, boom, that guy's dead. It's... There's a lot of tension in making these armor saves, and that's a good thing. The game is also very cinematic. Anytime we're done playing, we can tell a story of how the, the game unfolds. There's a lot of those whoa moments, or like just cheering for that good dice roll. I know a lot of people are turned off by any of these uh, dungeon coal type games because it's just luck of the dice, luck of the dice, luck of the dice. Um, of course. That's not going to be any different than that. You do have the luck of the dice, but there's also, you know, good strategy in playing your cards at the right time and, uh, and, and waiting for the right time to strike. Yes, you want your dice to work in your favor, but I mean, with the D20 system, it feels like you have a greater chance of hitting when you're really good at something. There's 10 um, campaign missions that are all linked together in the, the rule book. And, um, I mean, you can play through that as a different faction three times right there, so that's 30 plays. And then, like I said, you've got this mission deck where you can just build your own missions. Um, here's one objective for, a, for each of the factions. So they would each have three of these cards here. And you just set up and go from there. So the replayability is almost infinite. Even playing the same faction on the same mission could be fine. There's also rules for, um, just say a Marine kills someone, then you would mark that, and they can actually gain experience and buy perks. I haven't played with that yet, um, although I'm going to start soon. It Reading it just feels like more convoluted, crazy rules that I'm going to have to read about five times and really work my way through to figure that out. There's probably people out there that are much smarter than me that will figure it out right away. But it's not clear because they've got charts for different weapons and stuff like that. So if you have a different combination that's on one of these cards, I guess you'd have to write everything down on paper. But they don't tell you that. They just I feel like they're, they're leaving something out when they're describing how to uh, play with the leveling up system. But um, I'm not worried about it. I'll get to the bottom of it. And we're going to implement that soon. You certainly don't need to use all of that. And I certainly wouldn't recommend it until you're well versed in how the game plays. There's also the army building, uh, where you pick a different amount of points and everybody brings their own combination. Haven't gotten into that yet either. And it's, it's in the same category with the experience and the leveling up. It's, uh, it's going to take a few uh, rereads of those rules, but it is there. This game does stand out for me as a miniatures game. Now, I love the Predator movies. One and two are great. Aliens is one of the greatest action movies ever made. Um, I do like the first one and the fourth one. And uh, the new one I didn't hate as much as someone. The Aliens vs. Predator movies, big time disappointed in them. I mean, they could have done so much cool stuff with them. Um, I like the comics, but I think the studio just had too much influence on what the writers and directors wanted to do with those movies. But I already like the IP, 
Um, it's gorgeous to look at. The gameplay is cinematic. Um, you can probably bang off a game in, you know, uh, an hour, hour and a half. It doesn't drag on too long. You can be eliminated before the end of the game. It, it did happen once, um, but it was like another turn or two before the end of the game anyway. But if this is your type of game, if you're into this IP, you want to put in the work uh, to learn the rules. And it, it was a chore to really grasp everything because poor rule books are the common, they're the norm. They really are. And I can't wait until they're the exception. But I give this a recommendation for anyone that likes these uh, dudes battling out in a dungeon skirmish type game. And Protoss, the company, also has a expandable miniatures game that uses all these figures. Aliens vs. Predator Unleashed. And you can download the free PDF from their website or order your own copy of the book. My brother did get that, so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that jives. But uh, that's my two cents. Aliens vs. Predator... I've been playing it. It's kind of in the regular rotation. Everybody's having a blast with it. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.